Hello everybody, and welcome back. Last episode we were in a big fight, and we got beat up pretty good. Off camera I took everybody back and healed them up. We had multiple injuries on some of the characters, but we're all good to go. Now today we're going to start by going down this path. So, let's go ahead and see what's down this road. Oh, the trap. Okay, what's this? The runes form the lines of an ancient Xenos poem that tells of the creation of a Lilithan, of turning a lifeless dead world into a blooming garden. So that's what Lilithan means. All right, Argenta, can you... Oh, she's going to do it. Okay, so... Yurlit can undo traps as well. There's lore up here, but we're going to continue down this way. Just not sure what we're going to... Okay, there's something we can do there. Now, does this path, this path leads off that direction. Let's see if we can see what this does. What's up here? Okay, there's some gear or something up there. So let's go get that. We didn't make it. Let's try again, guys. There we go. Um... Let's undo this. Oh, Argenta's gonna get that one. Well, there's lots of goods here. Data slate with notes and some medicates. We are going to read that note. Kurt, I know it's been rough for you since the meeting by the ruins. First contact leaves an impression on everyone. But when I recommended you to the commander, I never thought you wouldn't have the stomach to process the truth. Think what you want, but I'm still your friend. I don't want anything to happen to you because of your own stupidity. I saw your bag with the packs of Nutribars that our lads brought from the settlement. If you thought no one would notice a couple of clips missing from Torben's backpack, you thought wrong. I want to give you a chance. Return the goods. You know every Nutribar counts these days. The stuff that grows in the forest is no longer edible. And we're in need of weapons more than ever. I can guess why you need all this. You want to split. Abandon our cause. Go back home. Pretend nothing happened. But I'm not writing this to appeal to your conscience. I just want to say that you're a marked man now, Kurt. After meeting the higher-ups, cutting and running is the worst thing you can try and do. They're watching those who've seen them. They won't let you leave. Let's talk. Just, just talk. You and me, in private. Let me know when you're in camp. Well, it doesn't look like he made it to camp. Now, he does have some stuff also, some really good grenades. And we're going to give her that. What is this one? Crack grenade. Okay, we'll give her that too. Oh, you know what? This is the servo that's following us, this guy. I finally figured it out. I wondered why we were being followed and why he was shouting out once in a while when we were in town. I don't know if there's anything else up here. Now that, that's just in the camp we were in, so we're going to go back down and continue on our way. Now it looks like there's some kind of a beach. In the back of the corpse... Oh, there's a dead body there. 
In the back of the corpse's head, there's a strange narrow hole that does not look like it came from any conventional imperial weapon. A hole like that could have been left by a thin blade piercing the skull. I wonder if that's Kurt. It has to be. There's no reason to go over there. It doesn't appear, so... All right. Well, now we know for sure. Let's continue on our way. We've got some more bits of ruin. Oh no. Okay, we were ambushed. Of course we were. Let's start the battle. Now these guys are tough. We had to fight them before, but there's only two of them. So we should be fine. Alright, Anya. We know they're gonna come our way. I think I'd rather put them in the danger squares. And hit that. And let's go ahead and deep buff. Now if I debuff that I won't be able to shoot. So we are going to shoot this one. Hey Argenta, can you move over here, dear? Oh! It's running gun. I'm gonna put her over here. Hopefully she won't get everybody, but wait. Oh no, this is the only chance she can to shoot. Do a good job, girl. Okay, got him once. One creature, all creatures. Let's hit you. Okay. We're gonna shield. Endure. Come over here. Oh no, she's down. That's not good. Okay. If you cleave, let's see. No, oh, you're not going to cleave. You're just going to hit. some strength. Give everybody some resolve. And let's put this guy on Heinrichs. See how that works. All right, Pascal. First, we're going to go ahead and put this on. Now, that's all creatures. That's one creature. Good shot. I'm going to have to switch. Let's give this guy... Hmm... 
vision of death. And then we'll deep off it. This one. First, are gonna have everybody automatically dodge. Here we go. Not bad. Brace for impact. Cleave. I'm a member. Sweet. Okay. Let's do that again. We'll, we'll use the axe though this time. Again. Well, that wasn't too bad. Yerlet's unusually dispassionate face is contorted in a grimace of pain and rage. Your elucidator activates when she begins speaking in her own language. I swear on Cain's ribbon heart. Mararan, you will pay for your treachery. May Morai Hag sunder your fate and cast it away. May the blood of Eldenish flood your throat. I'm still a little upset about her. She's not speaking about why those other Aldoras were in the camp. Now I could say that, or I could tell her to get a grip. Let's do that one. Get a grip. I doubt that will be the last battle we see today, and I need allies with all their wits about them. Yerlet closes her eyes sucks in a breath through her teeth and quickly murmurs something. When she opens her eyes, her face is once again a mask of cool serenity. She looks at you and begins to speak, this time in low gothic. Please excuse me, Ellen Tuck. I allowed the turmoil in my soul to win out over my reason. A slip like that could cost me more than you can even imagine my, my very soul. I must be more careful, even in the face of treachery. All right, isn't it time you told me what's going on? I see no other path. You deserve the truth. You think? We call ourselves the children of Asurian. Alderi is another name of ours. We are the echoes of the great empire that once ruled the galaxy and created new worlds. The planet that you call Janus is one such maiden world, the Lilithan. A haven that our ancestors made for their kin. For many millennia, only the shadows of our predecessors lived among the ruins. Until you humans came here. We are the heirs, and we are entirely within our rights to call the maiden world our own. However, our arrival is a tragedy, not a homecoming. We belong, belonged, to Craft World Cruderock, which fell on the border of this star region. Only the providence of the merciful gods allowed us to escape the fate that befell those whose souls perished amidst the stardust, along with our abode. Destroying an Aldari craft world is a serious achievement. I'd like to shake the hand of whoever did it. Yeah, he doesn't like Xenos at all. Pascal. Which border 
Exactly. You don't need to know that, Iron Monkey. I'm aware of your looting practices. After the calamity, the Lilithan offered my kin a sanctuary, a place of respite in the ruins of our ancestors under the canopy of the forest. Living alongside your kind, who reap the fruits of our labor with such vulgarity. So why did your own kind attack you? I know not the answer to that question. Many cycles have passed since I departed these forests and my kin. They cannot, they cannot have forgotten me, can they? I don't know, but it was under your suggestion we come here. So you better figure it out. How are your kin connected to the uprising happening on Janus? The Ashuriani do not enter battles they cannot win. However, it is in our power to direct the currents so that the elements themselves wash obstacles and enemies from our path. And so it was in this case. Mararin, he's the farseer from Kudarak, saw a future without the monkey. And we followed this lead. We simply used the monkey's passions against them, their love of freedom and anarchy, their love of domination and violence. Stoking enmity between servants and rulers is easier when your targets are governed by emotion rather than reason. My kin became military advisors to the monkey who rose up against the ruler of this world. I had a different mission, to become Vistenza's handler, since the rebels would be unable to get to her until both sides were sufficiently weakened. The ruler of the humans had never seen a child of a Shirin before, and so she accepted the lie about a degenerate branch of monkey dwelling far from their own kind. So why are you now telling me this? What's uh, brought on this candor? Ellen Talk, your arrival has thrown my paths into disarray. While I was shadowing the human's ruler, I failed to see the signs signs that there was another threat looming over the Lilithan besides the monkey's deeds. The threat should be familiar to you, as it is to other intelligent species. We call it Salanthresh, she who thirsts, goddess of chaos. Salanthresh and she who thirsts are the names the Aldari gives the chaos god Slanish their ultimate enemy. Slanish is the god of passion, excess, and forbidden pleasures, and is known for his fickle and treacherous nature. I have heard of Slanish, and it's not good. Kind of a strange, uh, god, <laughs> to say the least. A disfigurement, it seems you call these uh, mutations, are the surest sign of this threat. By mutilating living forms, this malevolent power subjugates them and bends them to its will. You have seen the deformities in the faces of those who are closer to the Lilithan's body than others. The rebels who hide under the canopy of these forests. The Lilithan's world spirit senses this threat and resists as much as it can. The living things that inhabit this world are becoming its weapons. Weapons turned against a monkey. Poisonous plants, rabid beasts, these are all like the blade of the Lilithan's hand as she fights the coming of Salanthresh. Oh, so Slanish is coming here. The signs that have been revealed to me, they all indicate the presence of corruption. Tendrils of corruption may be spreading throughout the world spirit, poisoning it even as we speak. But for corruption to take hold of the planet so quickly requires effort 
effort directed by the will of another. I believe the stanza is in thrall to the will of Slanish. Oh, you know, I thought something was off about Vistanza. That's why we put her under guard, although, ooh, that might not be, that might not have been a safe thing to do for our guards. Avalar, what? Vistanza Fayette? The governor who has duly served the dynasty and the Imperium for decades? Anya. I hope you will not stand for such slander aimed at one of your finest servants. Oh, I'm not really pleased with Vistanza either, oh, Havillard. <laughs> Maybe Vistanza is tainted from consorting with the archenemy. We will have to find out for ourselves, and we shall. Well, perhaps the signs I uncovered have failed to convince you. I pray to the gods that other proof, something more comprehensible to you, will emerge to sway your opinion. Slanish is deceitful and cunning. She subtly penetrates the soul, offering false perfection, luring victims into her web with promises of wicked ideal. The ruler of the monkey perhaps doesn't even know that her soul has been corrupted. Oh, gosh, I hope it wasn't that thing, that e that element that we ran into when we were in the uh, jungle on the other planet. Huh. Well, if we wish to meet the leaders of this uprising, we better keep moving. I don't want to discuss. Oh, no, Heinrichs is damaged now. Okay, we have to get to the ship to fix him. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Alright, the, uh, these little steps are trapped. Oh, you know what? We didn't loot. We didn't loot. Did they have? No, they didn't have anything. All right, let's. Uh, ooh, we've, we're at the ruins. A giant, ravenous creature whose hide is pierced with spikes and spines. The skin around the growths is inflamed, as if the protuberances have appeared recently causing the creature pain, so something was corrupting it from the inside, perhaps. Oh, we got more rebels here. We can speak to them. There's a named one. Okay, I'm going to save. I guess we could try to speak to them. like a teleport of some kind. Oh, that's Muarin. The tall being in a fine long garment turns to you, their face hidden behind a blank visor of their helmet. When they begin to speak, even from a distance, you feel the air around the figure grow cold. Monkey, you should not be here. Yurlet strides forward, her eyes flashing. Muarin, I am calling you to account. You said that the great danger threatening the Lilithan lurked in the hearts of the monkey, in their greed and ignorance. All the while, another enemy was looming over this world, an enemy whose tracks you should have seen in things to come, Solanish. 
She who thirsts is threatening this world, and you hid it from us. Answer me, did you or did you not behold our greatest foe in the Lilithan's future? Did you lie to me? After Yurlit's words, the two tall Eldari behind Murarin start moving. One looks around at the leader while the other lets out a cry, muffled under his visor. The rebel beside you cringes as though the Eldari's speech causes him pain. He strains to say something, but Murarin makes an imperious gesture and the soldier meekly straightens up and salutes, staring at the Xenos with slavish devotion. Okay. The robed figure inclines their head. Yerlet the outcast, you left the path that was set out for you. You brought unknown monkey to our refuge. And now you speak to me with unseemly anger. Your long wanderings far from Kudrak have altered your mind and tainted your sight. I'm not going to say anything. My uh, wanderings are the path I have chosen for myself, far from the walls of Kudrak. I have seen and come to know things that no other Eldari could, hidden away in a craft world their entire life. Why do you deny my words about Slanish? Is it because you were lying to me and my kin when you showed us the true path? This Elintok was the first person to discover the coming of Slanish one of those whom the monkey called Chaos Gods. Without her, I would still be deceived by your words about destiny and the true future. Monkey revealing paths? This is ludicrous. Monkey brings pain and strife in our time and for all time. How can you trust a monkey after what we taught you? After hearing the sorrowful song of the dying world, it looks at me. It was not chance that brought Kudarok down. Monkey destroyed our ancient home. All right, since so she's looking at me, I guess I need to respond. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry to hear that your home was destroyed, but I wasn't there and know nothing of this calamity. It gazes at you intently. If these words had come from an Eldari, I would have believed them. But you are merely a monkey, a plaything of your own passions. Any emotion that takes hold of your soul can drive out all trace of reason and honor. You are playing with words and avoiding the question. Notes of desperation and rage are creeping into Yerlet's voice now. The Lilithon is under threat from our eternal foe. And yet you are more concerned about the presence of the Elintok than the corruption that is flowing through the veins of this world. Did you never consider that your war might simply be hastening Slanish's triumph? Perhaps the ruler's servants, in their efforts to protect her, will resort to more and more instruments of corruption. You left Kudarok in our darkest hour to gratify your ego. You came to us on Lilithan, and I accepted you as one of our own. I even gave you a real purpose. You're lit, the outcast, and you dare to insult me? A far seer. It was a mistake to let you into our circle. You have turned our efforts to survive into dust with your own hands. 
Oh no. I was hoping the conversation would go better than this. I am a child of Asherin Mararin. Not a plaything in the cold hands of fate which you claim speaks to your mouth. My choice of path is no worse than yours or any other Eldari's. And my path calls me to fight our true enemies, not eradicate the monkey. If it comes to it, I will stand with them. For this Ellen Talk can see what you are blind to, Farseer. Oh, God, she just threatened. Oh, you're late. You're not helping the situation, really. Her eyes are alight with fury. She pointedly lays her hand on her weapon, looking away from the Farseer. I am willing to help the Eldari defeat the arch enemy, but first we must deal with the rebellions you have been orchestrating. Ooh, you know what? Uh, I don't think this is going to work, so okay, we're going to say this one. Muarin turns his head to you. So, Yerlet the Outcast has revealed our secret to you. I'm sure you have something to say in that regard, monkey. If this world is in serious danger, there is no sense in fighting each other. Let us deal with our common enemy together. The name of that danger is monkey and I will see to it that the Lilithan is purged of those defiling her face. Uh, then again, there is one way to prove to me that the monkey truly do care about the well-being of their world. Eliminate the ruler, and relinquish the governing of this world to me and my kin. The Lilithan herself will stand as a surety for our agreement, as will your compatriots who live on it. And the profit that you will gain by tilling the maiden world, Muarin tilts his head. Our human helpers will replace the leaders of the monkey. We will be the ones who govern the Lilithan from the shadows. So what's my guarantee that the planet and its inhabitants will be safe? You have the word of a child of Ashurin, who venerates life far more than any of you. What is more, monkey, I have not the slightest desire to inflict harm upon the Lilithan, the land of the Eldari ancestors. I suppose my demands can be considered a gift for the likes of you. You could not wish for anything better than Eldari stewards to rule over monkey without bloodshed. Iconoclast, I have to do this one. I can't convince your kinsmen, but I know you are on my side. Will you help me save the Lilithan from the true enemy? Yurlet seems to freeze for a moment, and then she turns sharply to Morarin. Throughout all the cycles that I wandered amidst the stars, I was sure of one thing. Fate can be changed. Cling to your faith, Farseer. But I refuse to follow a blind man who is dooming his kin to a false hunt. I am going off on my own path with the Elintar. Muarin's voice rumbles like distant thunder. You will not defy your masters and betray the customs of the Kudarak again, outcast. Stop treating my path as if it were a curse. My path is not a mark of disgrace. It was what saved me from dying along with Kudarak, a death it was doomed to suffer by your empty predictions. You foolish wretch. You have exceeded my patience. Your path ends here and now. Here we go. 
Well, this is what we were supposed to do. Apparently we got an update on our quest. But we are going to save the game and pick it up next episode.